Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We've tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live. I don't know how long this show is going to last for because I've had to do some uh, jiggery pokery with the RAM memory on my computer. So hopefully we'll get through it uh, today, but we'll see. Let's just, let, let's just uh, crack on with it. Just going to plug my headphones in two seconds. Go. I always feel more wide in and focused when, I've, uh, when I'm all set up, rocking and rolling. Right, here we go. So uh, let's uh, let's get through this. Hey, Richard Leach in the house already. Yo, 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 great stuff. Right, yeah, so uh, the reason for any newbies watching this show, and there are going to be loads, thousands piling in in the near future, we, uh, we broadcast live on Twitch every day, live at five. The reason we're on Twitch is because YouTube have tried to ban my channels. They took two of my channels down. Then they uh, prevented me from editing my shows and they deleted episodes. I was just like, this is absolutely insane. This is everything that is wrong with big tech. So now we'll do a variety of platforms, broadcasting live on Twitch TV. We'll upload the trailer onto YouTube and then we'll put the full episode up onto Streamanity where you can uh, upload your content and uh, set your own fee dependent on what you think of the quality. There we go. So let's just uh, crack on with it quickly. These are the images I like to start off with. So there's like little sort of like uh, introductory images that people need to know, obviously when they're first getting into, uh, well, first getting into the Bitcoin that we know about. So it is, this is the current situation with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has just simply scaled massively. Bitcoin has got smart contracts applications on its platform. Bitcoin can do everything. It is the world's greatest money. It is programmable money, like they call Ethereum, but we know Ethereum is a bag of shit. It is a store of value, just like they call BTC, except Bitcoin is all of those things and more. It is cash. It is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system where the data is a commodity. Well, the actual commodity is sovereignty over our data. It is data sovereignty commoditized in the form of an electronic coin which is Bitcoin, which is why Bitcoin is likely to become the most valuable thing in the world. Like gold is backed by its utility because, you know, gold is like precious and it can be highly, you know, it's highly divisible and malleable and highly conductive, non corrosive, uh, you know, pretty color and all that unique. Whereas Bitcoin is even better because the value is our freedom. 
Like, it's absolutely massive. So, uh, uh, what happened on the 24th of August 2017 was uh, a group of developers called Blockstream who were funded by uh, uh, companies with suspiciously close links to the Federal Reserve decided to uh, segregate the signatures, which uh, meant that they could literally do anything on the network because they weren't accountable to anybody. They totally centralized control of it, and by centralizing control of it, they sent its value crashing down to zero. And uh, for anybody who don't, doesn't believe me that uh, Blockstream control it, well, all you need to do is uh, listen to this video that I have uh, kindly uh, well, put together for you guys. Now, I'm going to play this. Fingers crossed my computer can actually handle the data of this. Like two seconds. Here we go. Have a listen. Bitcoin was created by, by the central bankers that enslave you today. It is their scapegoat. How do you want? How do you answer those, Max and Stacey? I think the evidence is clear that uh, they do not control it. It, it. There's ten years, almost eleven years now of uh, track record. Yeah, yeah. Blockstream well, controls it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who does? Blockstream. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the government does not control it, but uh, Blockstream does. <laughs> In that one statement, and I've never heard Samson Mao come on a social media program after this because I called him on it. They were just like, oh, you're, so you're the, uh, you're uh, Blockstream social media, uh, oh, well, Blockstream um, uh, chief strategy officer. Well, you, well, considering you're trying to, uh, you know, um, disguise people of the fact, this faux pas, the Blockstream control it, because if they control it, it's got no value. He's just said it there. I mean, I don't, you don't really need much more than that. That is it. And it's factually correct anyway. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was looking at you when I said that. Yeah. I'm a block. <laughs> I have a spy. I'm, I'm more than a spy. <laughs> no. So, um, this, um, you know, it's an interesting now that it's, it, there's. Yeah, it's an interesting now that there's. Uh, oh my God. Like, honestly, I like, you know, oh, again, I mean, you know what's fascinated me, actually? I mean, um, well, well, when we go into the show after the trailer, uh, you know, the, the concentration of quality in Bitcoin right now, which is BSV, is just absolutely staggering. Like the, the people in it, everybody I met, those I communicate with online, like I find my hippocampus is fully stimulated every day. I cannot wait to get up and find out what's going on because there is so much building going on. You know, there is like, there's there's more, uh, you know, education being uncovered. You know, like like my specialty is the, um, is the fundamentals, uh, but, you know, I'm still learning about the technicals. I know about the technical values and all that. Um, but, you know, there's just new stuff coming out, I'm learning new stuff, like particularly on Twitch. I'm actually loving that at the moment. So anyway, the reason we've got another chain down here is because Roger Ver and his crony mates thought they would do the same thing. They would then mess around with the signatures. They would add snore signatures. They would add checkpoints. They would uh, change the protocol every six months, completely control it. They would uh, try to make it anonymous so it's, uh, so it's not regulatory compliant. And if it's anonymous, it's centralized because there is nobody holding the, cent uh, the anonymous um, uh, created to account. And if you don't believe me that uh, BCH is a load of crap, well, you just need to listen to what Roger Verse said in his interview. Have a listen to this. I have a question here from Sertoshi, defender of Bitcoin. He said, if a cryptocurrency is anonymous, like BCH, I don't think BCH is anonymous, but maybe there is something. Check out cashfusion.com and, and you, you combine oh. that with uh, reusable payment codes and you get Bitcoin cash in the same sort of ballpark of privacy as Monero. It's really awesome. So you can check oh, out okay. cashfusion. And I always get it wrong. I think it's .com, but it might be .org. So you can check both cashfusion.com. And he sounds really chuffed with that. Well, congratulations, Roger. Because you're such a douchebag, what you don't understand is what you've just said there has crashed B crashes fundamental value to absolutely zero. And he's celebrating it. <laughs> okay, awesome. So so BCH may be using Cash Fusion and XMR. If they're anonymous, how can a business get legal recourse against a supplier if the supplier defaults and no proof on the transaction exists because anon? Yeah, you want your cryptocurrency to be perfectly legal for everything all the time? Just go use your Visa card. Just go use your PayPal, right? What do you need a cryptocurrency for? You can do all of it with a centralized, fully legal and fully compliant payment platform, right? So go use PayPal. I think you've missed the entire point. Uh, the entire the entire point of cryptocurrencies is that by technological design, they are beyond the reach of the law. That is absolutely ridiculous. By technological design, Bitcoin is a commodity. 
And because it's a commodity that commoditizes our, so our sovereignty over our data, that's where the value comes from. And the reason the government hasn't shut it down is because it is regulatory compliant. And it is common to everyone. What he's done is he has centralized Bitcoin crash. He has uh, uh, made it illegal. So, I mean, chances are the law is going to take it down and all the investment and any energy that goes into it is going to be lost. It is dangerous. It is stupid. It is reckless. It is irresponsible. Absolute fool. They're above the law. That's why, imagine, if Bitcoin could have been shut down mm. by governments, they probably would have shut it down from you know, right out of the gate. And it's the fact that Bitcoin can't be shut down. What Someone's going to learn the hard way. But like, what, like We should ask the BSVers this. If they pass a law saying BSV needs to shut down their blockchain, are they going to obey and shut down their BSV blockchain? Yeah, because it's illegal. I hope the answer would be no. Um, I mean, I can't believe that I actually used to listen to this guy. You know, like, honestly, I, I I started off having so much respect for Roger. I was like, oh, wow, he's this Roger Ver guy. Wow, you know, I mean, he's been into this uh, for so long. He seems to know about these QR codes and he seems to know about legacy addresses and he's talking about Bitcoin and he says it's going to be worth a lot of money. Oh, wow. You know, and now I'm just like, mate, you're a douchebag. <laughs> Which is just, you know, a lot of the stuff I see from some of these BSVers are silly. Uh, but then there's other BSV. Oh, Roger, you're so silly fans that uh you know i'm very very sympathetic to their way of thinking but the the ones that say that's about he's talking about Derek mcgill that the blockchains all need to be legally compliant about everything all the time uh just go use your visa card thanks for that roger i will certainly prefer to use that over b crash you absolute moron so uh anyway if you want to work if you want to know why i call it uh bitcoin crash uh it's because that's what roger, roger calls it have a listen and we're going to really spread bitcoin crash across the entire country here in antigua <laughs> oh dear right so the whole point of something being a commodity is that no one has any centralized authority and control over it and authority control comes power and uh with oh, we, you know as as we know with uh with absolute power um well absolute power corrupts absolutely you know and this is what um, a Bitcoin has taken away. So just listen to what the creator says about power and Bitcoin. Here we go. This is what it all comes down to. See, what people don't understand is Bitcoin with a stable protocol takes away power. If no one can change the protocol, not me, not God, there's no power in money. Money is all about power. And this is one of the things Bitcoin has done. It has removed that power. It will remove that power globally. There we go. It will remove that power globally. And let's find out why he's gone to the effort to actually design a system that has been able to commoditize our data sovereignty. Have a listen to what he says and his motivation. At the end of the day, we own a lot of Bitcoin. The simple thing is, if we make the network scale, if we make it bigger, my main compensation, more than anything anyone could ever pay me, is the price of Bitcoin goes up. So that's my pure drive. I want Bitcoin not to go up to 10,000 or 100,000. I want it to be worth millions per Bitcoin. That's it. And that's what we spend money for. Very simple. There we go. That's it. That's what we spend money for. Very simple. For Bitcoin to be worth millions. And when it pops, it could literally just pop overnight. The entire world will pile in. There is a lack of uh, a liquidity in the market. The price will absolutely skyrocket. And when the price skyrockets, it can economically sustain all the miners. And all the apps on the network can maintain that price. So that all the miners can maintain uh, you know, um, the, uh, the, the costs of their mining operations. It's, it's really basic when you think about it. But again, you know, shit coiners with shit for brains, like, wouldn't really, uh, wouldn't really have a clue. Um, yeah, we'll go over that in just a minute. But let's have a quick look at this, uh, coin crap market. But before we do that, or when that comes up, before we do that, let's remind ourselves, what does it shit coiners say? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Just stay away from anybody who says that or sounds uh, similar to those two. Uh, right, so as you'll see uh, on this coin crap chart, every single cryptocurrency listed on it other 
than Bitcoin, the genuine Bitcoin, which is BSV, and Litecoin. They are all securities, every single one, which means all of them have absolutely zero value. And uh, the reason I've got a piece of shit, as in like the result of uh, Litecoin, is because Charlie Lee told everybody he created it, which is what discredits it, because that is your central point of influence. He started it. So if he started it, that means that he has not created anything that either the American government or the Chinese government could just simply start themselves. There is nothing unique about the uh, Litecoin network. But what's unique about the Bitcoin network is its neutral growth. So uh, if you want to see, let's have a listen to what Charlie Lee said about uh, Litecoin. Uh, just uh, feast you up. Have a listen to this. You created Litecoin, right? So this has to be something like you're incredibly passionate about. Yeah, as most of you probably know, um, I kind of created it just for fun, right? It wasn't, I didn't really expect it to become anything. Charlie, why don't you just say you created it as an effing joke? Because that's all it was. What's the difference between saying, oh, I uh, created it uh, you know, for fun and just saying you created it as a joke? Like, what's the difference? Like, it, in my mind, there is no difference because he treated it like a joke anyway. He exit scams for at prices which were $98, $155 and $350 per coin. And that's according to the Litecoin Foundation. Uh, I've basically, I, uh, I estimate that he's walked away with about 300 million. You know, the greatest exit scam in history. He will get away with it. He didn't do anything wrong. He never told anybody to buy it. He just simply said it was uh, silver to Bitcoin's gold, said it was Bitcoin's little brother, said he created it just for fun, right? Never encouraged anybody to, go, to get in, just simply got it listed on Coinbase. And then other people tried to copy him who aren't so smart. So Charles Hoskinson with Cardano. Except only IOHK can mine Cardano, which means it's a security, it's a centralized project. And to prove it, they actually did an ICO. But then he exit scammed for about 600 million, but he's not going to get away with it because he's a douchebag. But Charlie Lee, you know, I have to, I even, even I have to remind myself to, uh, you know, give him a rib tickling on every show because, you know, he's just like so, he just keeps himself like insignificant. Oh, you know, it's just nothing really, you know, just, just walked away with 300 million of other people's money. <laughs> Only Bitcoin has got any fundamental value. And as, as you can see, well, hopefully from these uh, little emojis I put here, the consensus algorithm is proof of work. The development on it is huge, hence the heavy lifting. The result, the result is a locked protocol, which means the entire world can, can use it. You know, it is permissionless. Anyone and everyone can build on it. The emoji is literally just money flying away. The future is it's going to absolutely rock it in utility. The description is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. The coin stamp is the dragon. The coin type is Bitcoin. That is it. There we go. My right, good grief. Glad we, uh, glad we got through that pretty quick. So let's check out uh, CoinDance. So I want to get through this quickly. Uh, just so hopefully we can get through it before my computer conks out. <laughs> well, if it does conk out again. I've had to disable all the apps running in the background, so I thought I thought that might do. So let's just go over Bitcoin. Ooh, number go up in the price there. So we've got the hash rate on Bitcoin 0.4%, network nodes 2.5, transactions 32.5, oh, and uh, block size 34. Again, massive change is going to come very soon, very soon. Uh, so let's just play a uh, spot the biggest block on B crash. We've got a 1.1 megabyte, a 1.6 megabyte, a 2 megabyte block. Check them out. Woohoo! Celebrating tonight. 2.1, 2.3 by a Foundry USA pool. So uh, maybe, I don't know, like number go up, you know, maybe people are more like, you know, trying to use it because obviously they've got a head start on Bitcoin. But we have a look at CoreCoin and they've got a 1 megabyte restriction. So it just means that people can't use it anyway. Well done then. <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at Bitcoin straight away. Look at this. A double digit megabyte block by Tau. 13 megabytes. Wow. Yeah, look at that. 11, 11 megabytes from, from Tau. 7.7. .7. Bitcoin absolutely smashing it. Graphs. Bitcoin hash rate by network. Yeah, again, uh, hash rate just simply follows price, which follows value, which follows utility. Uh, proof of work. Again, CoreCoin B crash will just stop. Uh, B crush versus Bitcoin hash rate, B crush versus Bitcoin proof of work. Uh, 
That's more like it. 27,000 times, well, in fact, 28,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than CoreCoin. It's currently 6.3% uh, more profitable to mine on uh, CoreCoin just because, you know, number go up. Miners just simply got to take, chase profits. Uh, daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Oh, CoreCoin went in. Uh, daily Bitcoin transactions by network. CoreCoin went in. Daily average Bitcoin transactions per block. CoreCoin went in. Oh. Fees USD, Bitcoin smashing it. Fees Satoshi, Bitcoin smashing it. Uh, block world ratio, yeah, again. Again, this will just simply follow uh, price, which follows value, which follows utility. Thank you, Coin Dance. Um, and then we'll just uh, just laugh at the uh, uh, accumulated Bitcoin blockchain growth. B crash, absolutely pathetic. I mean, they're lucky to get over 2.2% transactions on the network, but you know, that's only because uh, Bitcoin's down at the moment. You know, a uh, calm before the storm, should we say. So let's have a look at the hash rate. And again, the hash rate gives away loads. The recent price spike that we looked at, uh, as I went over the other day, I spotted that something was coming. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was, but I could see that Tau had focused all of their hash rate on uh, on Bitcoin. And now look, Tau are back on, uh, well, actually this is um, seven days, but uh, so Tau, uh, well, actually that's, that's um, global hash rate. Uh, global hash rate 24 hours or oh, binance macking it 24 hours uh, as is uh, btc.com fancying it pushing pool in and uh, f2 pool down to a fourth and fifth i mean pool in's uh, usually been up there so let's have a look at core coin so tal is not on core coin Ooh. see like, i think that's a huge indicator tal is not on core coin yeah, I, I, I think there's massive things in the pipeline. Well, I know there's massive things in the pipeline, but, you know, it's a case of timing. Um, so, yeah, I need to get my money in quick whenever they're off all the chains. Uh, B crash again, absolute joke shop. They've got Hathor chomping away at the blocks, making it less profitable for all these shitcoin enterprises to mine on it. Um, yeah, can't be asked with that. Right, Bitcoin. Wow, look at this. So, Huobi. Huobi fancying it. I mean, Huobi is a huge miner. They're a huge miner. Uh, so maybe, maybe they're, maybe they're look, maybe they're doing what I'm doing. Maybe they're not in the know, but they're kind of like, hold on a minute. These are the boys we need to follow, you know. And wherever they go, we're gonna go, sort of thing. So uh, Tower nineteen point four four Hathor still on there. BT Jihan still fancying a bit for whatever reason. But look at this, F2 pool and pooling. All the Mac Daddies on there now. Gesturing. Mmm. Ha. Huh. Maybe it's because they're, you know, maybe looking to switch over at a moment's notice. Who knows? Who knows? Right, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the blockchain working in front of our very eyes. Here we go. Right, and generating huge transactions at the moment with nearly 50% of the transactions on chain and is the Awareness Neutral Network Explorer. Yes, indeed. And so we've currently got nearly three three transactions per second at the moment. Again, nothing for Bitcoin. Uh, as in, like, you know, I've seen that over 3,000. The uh, vertical uh, rectangular blocks are the transactions being recognized by the nodes on the network. Below them are the organizations generating those transactions. And then on the right, we've got the transaction ID, the input, the output, the type, and the op return. Then they are thrown into the meme pool. And when they're in the meme pool, they are then uh, competed for by the miners in order to uh, process the transactions, put them in a block, put the block on the blockchain, and win the Coinbase, which is the uh, 6.25 Bitcoin block reward. So we've got quite a big block here from Tau. That's a uh, 13 megabyte block. So if we scroll over that one, we can see in the highlighted rectangular box below that uh, it's got the uh, the hash number of the block. It tells us who it was mined by, the size, the time, the date, the transaction count, 13,000 transactions, and total fees of $7 in a block. So um, as we know, for anybody who's been watching my show, those fees um, in the block are due to, well, anticipated to surpass the block reward, which is $1,000 in quarter one of this year, which is gonna be massive. So you can expect huge volumes of transactions coming on chain, massive ones. Um, let's see if we can find that lovely picture. Is it down here somewhere? Mm -hmm. 
We're using it on another show. That's the one we want. Yeah, so look at this. Uh, crossover anticipated around quarter one, 2021. Look at this. So this is a BSV daily uh, transactions. I mean, look, I mean, look, somebody knows something. So, I mean, this is just absolutely staggering. So they are, they are coming from somewhere, you know, and we obviously, we see all the things being built at the moment. It's just going to be absolutely massive. Uh, absolutely massive. Um, so let's have a quick look at BFO charts. Have a look at transactions. When it comes up for any newbies, BFO charts has just got lots of metrics you can compare your shit coins with. Uh, it's great looking at the rich list because uh, it tells you how many Bitcoin and shit coin are in each wallet. These are the various metrics, and if you go to BitInfo Charts, you can see the various shit coins across the top that you can compare. And then in the uh, the blue tabs on the left tells you the metrics you can use. So we'll look at uh, transactions per block. We'll go to Log. We'll go for three years. We'll take out Dogecoin because that's an absolute joke. We'll obviously uh, add in Bitcoin because that's the only reason we're actually looking at it anyway. There we go, and that's BSV. And then uh, we'll just add a B crush for lulls anyway because it matches Litecoin. <laughs> There we go. So for anybody who's watching this uh, for the first time, we go, oh, what's that? Well, this is Bitcoin. So how come Bitcoin started there then? Well, this represents transactions on a new ticker symbol. It doesn't mean the chain started there. The chain still goes right the way back to the Genesis block. All that's happened is that the price has changed. That's all it is. The chain has not stopped. But, you know, the price is still to do with social manipulation and stuff like that. So, uh, right, there we go. Let's have a look at the uh, shitcoin market because we need to talk about what went on recently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. So, it looks like uh, Bitcoin's up on the day, but is it down on a week? You know, all these uh, shitcoiners have been crying over the fact that it's gone down. Oh, it's still up on the week, but look, fall from grace. So, uh, at its peak, it was 41,600. And now it's dropped down to uh, 35. So that's a, a drop of six grand. So uh, what, four grand would be like 10%. So this is like, what, like 12, 12%, you know, drop. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not that bad compared to, uh, you know, compared to other drops we've seen, but we know what's coming. I wouldn't be in that. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. Absolutely no chance. Still up on the month, but again, you know, why would shit corners go in now when it's when it's hit when it's hit, when it's hit this top? And we know that it's just simply uh, tether that's been pumping the price. All this talk of institutional money is absolute bollocks. But let's have a look at Bitcoin because that's the only one I'm really genuinely interested in. Oh, price go down a little bit, but let's see what happened this week. Uh, this is this is what we got to talk about. Here we go. Whoa, hold on, sorry about that. Just need to. Uh... Turn my volume off on my phone. Can't be dealing with getting interrupted while I'm doing a live show. There we go. Uh, here we go. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Wow. So the price was like nicely bobbing along. And as I'm saying, you know, when, when the price is doing this, this is the time to get in. Either I know people that FOMO'd in um, when, uh, when the price started going up. And it was just like, uh, you know... <laughs> what's the if you're gonna go in you should be going in yeah what is the point in waiting you think all oh, right well yeah so i'm only going to go in when the price goes up so well if you're only going to go in when the price goes up that means effectively you're trading and you're gambling because you know you're saying you're basically saying oh well i uh you know i need i need this money as uh, as cash i need the i need the i need the cash flow um whereas you know whereas if you've just gone in here you're just like, all right number go up you know this is this is pretty sweet but if you want to know what caused this, I mean, it went right up to uh, $300. This was caused by Donald Trump going on to, well, a profile on Twitch under the name of Donald Trump. So again, we are still waiting for confirmation of this. But um, where is like, I mean, let, let's talk about, you know, what we've experienced so far with the boys at Twitch. We know they are jokers, you know, we know that they've got a really wicked sense of humour, you know, it's genuinely really funny, you know, but they, they've, done, they've done jokes before just to get attention, like, yeah, the Kanye West, like, coming on, you know, all this kind of stuff, yeah, and it was funny, there was no one, there wasn't really any, yeah, nobody jumped on board with it, because, well, you know, none of the official channels, because it was a joke. However, 
two days prior to this profile uh, claiming to be Donald Trump making a, uh, a post on Twitch, Tao focused all of their hash rate, 100% of it, on Bitcoin. And I spotted it on my show. I said, look, I think there is something happening here. And uh, Coin Yeezy had been going on probably for about three or four days, maybe five days, you know, saying, oh, you know, I think the price is about to break out all these comments. And then CSW sort of like, you know, <coughs> getting involved with the joke, going, oh, you know, the frog has been pumping the price without my permission, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was funny. Do you know what I mean? But, it, but you know, it this was serious. I mean, look, they made a substantial increase in the price. Um, you know, I've emailed, or I've, I've messaged the profile, I've sort of like messaged the people at the top. You know, if it was a joke, I think they would uh, just simply be able to admit it. You know, what's the, there's no harm in just me going, yeah, it was a joke, we were pulling everyone's leg. What's with all the radio silence? You know? Uh, I, 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 think, I think there's a possibility, just because of the points I've mentioned, um, I think there's a chance it could be genuine. We've seen that he's been uh, kicked off Twitter, and we've seen that it's been like a big tech takedown of all these uh, freedom of speech platforms, you know, and all that. I think it could be uh, it could be absolutely massive. So uh, on that note, let's uh, let's see. Well, actually, I'm just uh, on my other shows, there were some there were some articles that I wanted to go through. So uh, about that uh, faux pas we had yesterday. But anyway, this is an important one. Check this out. Uh, somebody sent this to me, and this was the uh, oh, Desco Desco Games. This was the same chap who uh, has posted about the movement of BTC recently. You know, that's ready for a straight dump. So uh, check out what he said here. He goes, uh, "All right, well, well I've got to work hard uh, this week, so I'm uh, I'm not going to track Kraken on the uh, on the, the hourly today." But you can see Kraken here, and he said, um, uh, uh, "Go keep track of it yourselves. Uh, it's happening again." USD liquidity, or like no USD liquidity. Uh, and then if you look at this, uh, you can see that uh, like Tether is is below a dollar at the moment. But in the thread, he says here, he says, uh, checked Kraken on a break, and I might be able to slide a prediction in. <clears throat> the price has been struggling up, but there's a massive 680,000 liquidity wall uh, on 1.0004, which they are starting to eat into. It's possible the algos will eat themselves to death and we get a waterfall. And then he's put this other uh, chart here. I mean, look at that. Yeah, so it actually went up to uh, 1.002. Um, and he's pointing out sort of like the height as to where it's gone on these, uh, you know, on these charts here. So, I mean, I, again, I mean, I'm not too sure with this, but I mean, you can see he was just like, uh, speaking of which, holy hell. And he's uh, obviously like, you know, pointing out the, uh, pointing out this number here. The, uh, the point zero 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 four, uh, And he goes, uh, it hit 1.0005, I can't believe it. Uh, they really brought about this, uh, the big guns tonight. It took it all down like a champ. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not too sure what these figures mean, but, I mean, if somebody's saying, actually, these prove that there's a lack of liquidity, uh, I mean, we know that that's right anyway, but we're just, we're just actually seeing it. So, you know, it's, ha it's happening, uh, as they say, which, uh, which I think is, yeah, is, is huge, um, personally. Uh, I wouldn't want to be anywhere, anywhere near where, in, anywhere near that when that comes uh, crashing down. No siree, not at all. Um, so uh, yeah, these these were some um, articles that uh, I wanted to go over uh, yesterday. This was one of them. So this uh, uh, Stephanie Myers, she's got fifty seven thousand followers. She said here the the US is imposing sanctions on seven individuals and four entities that are part of Russia linked foreign influence network associated with Andrei Dr um, Drakach. Uh, who was designated on September the 10th, 2020, for his attempt to influence the 2020 US presidential election. Um, but, I mean, again, you know, this is what we're witnessing here is, this is the issue with centralised power. And centralised power flows towards the money. They want to get their hands on the source of the money. Because they can do. It's just simply money printers. That is it. Even the, uh, the UK government... 
have now basically uh, a private, well, not privatized, but um, they, they've turned it, they've, they, the government has control um, of the money supply, which is now like the Bank of England. Um, you know, whereas the US Federal Reserve, that's a completely private entity. I mean, that is absolutely insane. You have a group of individuals literally printing the money for the US economy. Now, that is ultimate power. You know, and I, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of a word that's above absolute power. You know, absolute power. Uh, yeah, but did it, you can, right, absolutely is the top, really. I guess, you yeah, know, you can't really get more than that when you've got your hands on the money. Yeah, so, and they're basically, they, they pay the government's wages. So nobody's going to do, you know, they want to keep their heads down and they're basically going to pay everybody off because they can do. They can print whatever they want. And they know they do off balance sheet transactions. But the problem is for them is that it messes up the economy. You know, uh, during times of uh, booms, lots of money is being printed. Uh, people are spending money. Borrowing is easy, easy to get hold of. But it creates a bubble every single time until eventually, like, costs get so high that businesses cannot repay their loans because their overheads keep going up. And the reason the overheads keep going up is because money keeps being printed. And the reason money keeps being printed is because the economy is growing. So that you're, it's, it, it's always going to come to a head. Always going to come to a head. And then they have to try and fix it. And they're like, oh, you know, well, we'll, uh, we'll increase interest rates. Well, you can't do that anymore. Well, certainly not at the moment because of the last financial crisis back in 2008. So what are they going to do? How do you stop people from borrowing? Well, you know, you just simply close the, uh, close the country down, close the world down. No businesses are going to borrow any money then, are they? You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just an absolute shambles, a shocker, an absolute shocker. Um, so I think there were some other, there's some other articles that I wanted to see here. Ones that were, ones that are uh, uh, about the uh, the U.S. government have now. Um, um, made a statement where securities are now illegal uh, to to deal with them, interact with them, with companies with uh, ties to the uh, Chinese military. You know, um, let's have let's have a quick look at this one. Um, I might have mentioned this yesterday. So uh, you know, people are people are going on about um, you know institutions coming into Bitcoin. I mean, Michael Saylor spent what nearly a billion dollars. You know, and uh, some other like Rothers investment have spent like a billion, but that's two billion. That is nothing compared to the amount of tether that has been printed out of nowhere and put into Bitcoin. You know, oh, institutions are coming. All I'm hearing is institutional investors and family offices. Absolute bollocks. It is tether, 100% without a doubt. Look, almost half a billion dollars printed in one go. Another 300 uh, million dollars printed in one go. Another 400 million dollars. All within the space of two days. That is uh, that is 1.1 billion dollars in two days from this uh, thing. I mean, it's, it's just hilarious. I can't believe that shitcoiners. I mean, shitcoiners are just simply celebrating number go up. They're just like, yeah, well, you know, tether print loads of money, make number go up. So what? I'm invested in this thing. That's what I want. It's just like, well, have you thought about how it's actually doing that? You know, if number go up, like in a Ponzi scheme. It is going to be taken down. It is going to collapse. It is not. It is not uh, fundamentally, structurally sound. There is no real value in this. Uh, it's not money. Yeah, if it can just, if it can just simply be manipulated so easily. Um, yeah, I mean, I just I hang my head when I uh, when I think about shitcoiners because I mean, literally, they're, they're just, they're just. I think they're absolutely nuts. You know, not looking at something like this when it's just so absolutely fundamental to something that people have got so much money in. You know, it's like literally so much money in. It's absolutely nuts. Um, uh, yeah, this this was funny. We'll have a look at the, we'll have a look at this one. <laughs> this was a Coin Telegraph. They were like, oh, uh, so time is running out to to own a limited edition Coin Telegraph non fungible token. We have less than 1,000 left, and they're uh, only getting more expensive as um, uh, Ethereum reaches for uh, higher highs. No, they're not. They're artwork. They will just simply disappear when the chain disintegrates. You know, and I was just like, oh, we say, oh, we've only got thousand. We've only got <laughs> well, we've less than a thousand. All oh, right, so wow, yeah. I mean, uh, you can't get rid of them then fast enough, can you? It just smells like desperation. 
You know, I mean, just just no clue. And I talk about something that had uh, no clue. So this was the famous tweet that uh, um, apparently Bill Meyer says when he said, uh, Bitcoin becomes less risky the higher the price goes. Not not in the ter- not in BTC's terms because it's a massive bubble. Literally, people just like pumping in the dump the market because there is no fundamental value behind it. So let's have a look at this article. I mean, it's, the people are just so gone with their wind. Uh, BMR says Bitcoin becomes less risky the higher the price goes. Pfft. Yeah, like he knows. Uh, so he just goes, uh, value investor. Yeah, whatever. Value investor. Value investor. Um, uh, Bill Miller said Friday he believes owning Bitcoin, that's core coin, becomes a safer investment decision the higher the price of the digital coin gets. I mean, if that isn't stupid and reckless and absolutely ridiculous, I don't know what is. Uh, core coin was trading over $40,000 per coin Friday afternoon, having passed the record high of almost $42,000. The cryptocurrency has been on a tear since March, which coincides with governments around the world undertaking massive stimulus efforts to offset the impact of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Again, they're like, oh, it's people going in. It's Tether absolutely pumping the price. It's insane. And just no one's talking, none of these shit coiners are talking about it. Like, none of them. Uh, it gets less risky the higher it goes. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, because it's still early in the adoption cycle, Miller said. Again, absolutely delusional. Um, that's the opposite of uh, what happens with uh, most stocks. Oh, my God. Uh, Bitcoin's total supply is growing less than 2% a year, and it's uh, obvious by the price that the demand is growing much, much faster than that. As long as uh, that obtains Bitcoin, as long as that uh, obtains, Bitcoin is likely to uh, go higher and perhaps considerably higher. Added Biller, founder, uh, founder of Chief Investment Officer of uh, Miller Value Partners. Uh, Miller, who managed a fund at the uh, at the beat, the S and P 500 for 15 years, um, while at Leg Mason, uh, said he did not have a specific price target for Bitcoin, but rather he has a price expectations. Ah, oh, he goes. I think now Bitcoin should probably end up 50 to a jump 100 percent from here in the next 12 to 18 months. I mean, based on what? It's absolute bollocks. Like a to- just just total bollocks are too close to lift off there's no there's there's nothing i can do really you know we know what's coming we've seen this like you know 50 billion dollar straight dump lined up you know it's going to absolutely annihilate all these shit coiners you know uh the world is just going to pile in um so i and i personally think it's probably going to start i think before the end of the month you know tether taken down uh ehr data come online um just drop the hammer that's what I think. Anyway, just going to be absolutely insane. So hold on to your hats when it happens. So uh, yeah, um, as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given. Same time tomorrow. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah! One vision.